Is that it? Wait, play that? That was our place. I found it first. I made the jokes. You tell to her when she's with you. Do you get deja vu? Huh? Earlier this year, Olivia Rodrigo released her first single, Driver's License. It became the first smash hit of 2021, breaking records and topping the charts for over two months. She has now released her second single, Deja Vu, previewing her highly anticipated debut album, which she recorded while filming the second season of her Disney Plus series, High School Musical, The Musical, The Series, in Salt Lake City. I'm Brittany Spano, senior writer for Rolling Stone. I sat down with Olivia and her producer, Dan Nigro, to talk about the songwriting and production process for Deja Vu. So Dan and I wrote this song together in like the end of August, 2020. I think we were actually like trying to write another like sadder song and it like wasn't working. And so Dan was like, well, what other ideas do you have? In my notes app on my phone, I have like all of these like, you know, poems and like, just like weird song concepts. And one of the like little hook lines that I had was, um, when she's with you, do you get deja vu? I just think deja vu is really cool. I get deja vu all the time. And I think it's like a really interesting phenomenon. And so I thought it would be like a cool way to talk about deja vu, to talk about like, you know, when you break up with someone and they move on, sometimes you like watch them on social media or whatever, and they're like living the same life that like you lived, like with another partner. That can be sort of frustrating. And I feel like that's a really like universal, relatable thing that like doesn't really get like talked about a ton. And so I thought that would be a cool way to talk about deja vu and like make it like fun and relationshipy. y I'd say maybe like half or like 75% of the songs that are on my project and that we make together, I sort of will write like a verse and a chorus and Dan will help me finish it and polish it up. But with Deja Vu actually, we wrote that like together. in a session together. Like I, I, I said I wanted to write something with like when she's with you, do you get Deja Vu? And we sort of created that like whole world together and, and wrote all the lyrics and the melodies together. I think Dan actually came up with the lyric, I think. You came up with the Malibu thing. Did I? Yeah, you said Malibu, and I was like, oh, I can like see that. And Dan was like, what's your favorite ice cream? And I was like, strawberry, and so we were like, strawberry ice cream in Malibu. Strawberry ice cream in Malibu. Don't act like we didn't do all that too. That was a clean version. <laughs> But I feel like the line that I, I most recall was the watching reruns of Glee. Yes. I was like, I was like <laughs> I was like, watch, but I know, I've never no, watched Glee before. No, neither of us have ever like, watched Glee, but we're like, watching reruns of Glee, heck yeah. And Dan actually came up with the Billy Joel lyric too, which is my, like, probably my favorite lyric in the thing. Just trying to make Long Island represent as much as possible in this, you know. <laughs> Oddly enough, like, I feel like the lyrics came so fast. I feel like with Deja Vu, it was like every idea that we came up with was oh actually kind of like, oh yeah, let's just go with that. It was like, try not to overthink it. You yeah, know? I remember I did write a second <clears throat> verse though. We wrote the verse in the chorus and then I like went home because it was like late and I wrote a second verse the next day that was like too serious. Because the fun thing about Deja Vu is it's like kind of like funny and like tongue in cheek a little bit. And so I remember like me writing like a serious one and you were like, no, I gotta keep it like I think that's the like, constant theme sometimes. Yeah. Olivia's that it gets serious. That I feel like that serious. was driver's license the same way. Like <laughs> the first bridge for driver's license was so emo and like, t h e r s like, I think we should make it more playful, right? <laughs> I'm very emo and Dan was in an emo band and he still tells me I'm emo. Like that's how you know you're really emo. My favorite thing about working with Dan is if I write something that's bad, he's like, you can do better than that. <laughs> and we like don't even entertain the idea. So it saves time. This song is de was definitely like the hardest song to make. Yeah. For some reason, the, pr the production part was really difficult because also Olivia went to Salt Lake. Salt Lake. So yeah. like the song wasn't actually finished being written, I think, when she left. I prefer when Olivia's in the room because like she can tell me in real time if she likes like a sound or doesn't like a sound. There were a lot of moments where like we didn't have like a, the right lyric or something and Olivia would like go in the car and I'd be like, just sing this yeah. into your iPhone because it was so difficult with the pandemic to get into a recording studio. There was like so much of that going back and forth in, with the song. And I think it was also a little difficult for me because I'm very much like a singer songwriter -y ballad type girl and this song is not like that at all. It's like a really like cool mid-tempo pop song. And so I think like finding like my footing in that like genre of music took like a little bit of time mm -hmm. and took a little bit of trial and error. Olivia and Dan shared some of the original recordings for the song and pointed out the intricate details and surprises on the track. And this was the original guitar that we wrote it to. This is really cool. I know, I always like this one. I had the original version of the song, like the very first demo that I don't think anybody ever even like 
heard this version I've never heard except it. for me and maybe you. I don't even think I have. So this is the original idea. Strawberry ice cream, one spoon for two, and trading jackets. Laughing about how small it looks on you. What we ended up using it was the Wurlitzer and like this toy piano mixed together, which is like the main sound. And like, I just wanted to feel somewhat like, I guess psychedelic's the word. I just wanted to feel like a little off-putting. I really love that. I love like how the verse is so like serene almost. It's like, like, like painfully calm because the lyrics are so saccharine in the beginning purposefully to like let you into the chorus what's clever about the song is that like the chorus is not what you ex you just don't expect the lyrics to turn to what they turn into so i think it's about that is like to kind of like engage the listener in a way that makes them feel like they don't actually know what they're about to get when they say saying i love you in between uh, the chorus and the verse I do you want to give that away you want to give it away <laughs> yeah, I'll give it away. Yeah, yeah, give it away? Yeah, yeah. Well, so only like like a couple people like pick up on it, but I like whisper like I love you in the track, and like it's like super buried. And my A and R, who's like probably listened to the song, the poor guy, he's probably listened to the song like two hundred times because it went through so many mixes. He listened to it two hundred times and like never heard it, which I think is super cool. So I don't know if it like only certain people can hear it, but it's like really buried and like very subtle. Love her in between the chords. That was another Salt Lake City car recording. Oh, there was a recording. Yeah, oh, yeah. These guitars are iPhone recording guitars, which is fun. And then obviously the, the jazz vacuum. Okay, uh, so actually, one of my Dan <laughs> refuses to call saxophones saxophones and insists that we call them jazz vacuums. <laughs> and um, there's actually a lot of jazz vacuums on <laughs> Olivia's recordings, so. One of my favorite parts is I, I had an incredible musician named Ryan do a lot of flutes and saxophone in this song, which I just think sound incredible. All these. studio one day and I was like, Dan, I hate deja vu. I don't <laughs> like it. I don't want to put it out. The second verse is boring and if I was listening to it, I would just turn it off. I was like so sad. And he's like, well, if like, the second verse is boring, let's like make it more interesting. And so we like changed the melody and we put some like, well, I just like love like gang vocals. I love like yelling over the top of songs. Um, and so we like added some of that and then I, I feel like it like really raise the energy of the song a little bit. Well, we bit. tried so many things. Yeah. Well, you were still in Salt Lake, and, and you were like, it's, it's boring, the song is boring, so I like sped it up, and then I sped it up a little bit more, and I was like, I don't think it's the speed of the song, and then I tried adding like other instrumentation, and I was like, it started to sound weird. You just don't think like to change the song. Yeah. You're like trying to change the production for so long, like how do we make this more interesting with the production? But ultimately, at the end, it was like, oh no, we just have to actually make the song better. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You get your friends to come in on a photo just so you seem nice. Wait, that's a different song. This is a, no, it's not. This is a different melody. We had a lot of different ideas for this thing. Yeah, this was a this. Wait, was this a, is a worker. We we like worked on this one. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we ever actually knew when it was done. I think it just had to be done. We literally, like, yeah. there was like the label was like, you have to turn it in by like today. And we were like, <laughs> okay. We wanted to write a bridge. I think that was like the last part that we wrote. I wanted to be like really high energy, because um, you know the rest of the song was like very like serene and like eerily calm. But I wanted like the last bridge to kind of like go crazy and I love Curl Summer, it's one of my favorite songs ever. I love the like the yelly vocals in it, like the harmonized yells that she does. I feel like they're like super electric and like moving and so I wanted to do something like that. And I love that um that little like that's like my favorite part of the production. 
That was a fight. That, that was, was a, a fight, too. That was a fight. We wanted to do a post-chorus, like a vocal post-chorus. Post well, like, yeah, I made the mistake of like printing, like because I got so excited about the song that I think I printed up a version for everyone to hear, like, check this out. And we didn't have a post-chorus, so I just like took Olivia's vocal and like made a little vocal chop. Yeah. And I kind of liked it. I know that it was like felt like we were cheating by making a vocal chop, yeah. but like when the label heard it, everybody loved it. And Olivia was like, that's not going in the song. And, uh, like, I, yeah. I don't like vocal chops. It's like, damn. Well, I'll play it. This was the shop. original, original drop that happened. Do you get deja vu? Huh? I was like, I don't know, it's like not my thing at all. I love like synths, and that, that, it's actually a synth and the thing. It kind of sounds like, like a cool like warped guitar, which yeah, I like. Yeah, it's a Mellotron. It's just like yeah. a super distorted Mellotron sound. But I like love that sound and it feels so like dirty and like raw. I'm, I'm happy we went there. I, I feel like I made the mistake of like making it no, early bounce because I was excited. Driver's license picked up steam much faster than Olivia ever could have imagined. I was curious how its immediate success affected the making of her second single. We chose this song to be to come out after Driver's License probably in September. Like we chose it a long time ago before yeah. Driver's License ever came out. You know, I didn't have to like choose the next single knowing that Driver's License kind of was this huge success. So that definitely took a lot of the pressure off, but us and, and my team really didn't want to like do the safe thing and like put out another heartbreak ballad. I just think, you know, people probably would resonate with that and they resonated with the driver's license, but we really wanted to show that I'm a versatile songwriter and a versatile artist and I can write like heartbreak songs and I can also like make like cool like alternative pop songs and stuff like that. So I just didn't want to be like pigeonholed into like the like heartbreak ballad kind of girl thing. So yeah, Driver's License did give me a lot of confidence in, in that regard. It's really true, like people really resonate with authenticity. You can have like this catchy melody and like the greatest production ever, but truth and like vulnerability is really what people resonate with and that's always gonna stay the same no matter what genre of music you do, no matter if you do an up-tempo song or a down-tempo song. And it's also just like cool, like I just love writing songs and like Driver's License means that probably other people are gonna like listen to my other songs, which is just such an added plus, so yeah. It's that's really cool. I know you get 